Hey guys, good news. I'm just about ready to fire this radio up for the first time. Uh, I replaced just about all the components. The only one I left in were these mica caps and some ceramic caps like I mentioned in uh, the earlier videos. Those generally don't go bad. And I found one resistor that measured out okay. What I mean by that is, so there's a silver band on this resistor. And same with these others I pulled out. That means it has a 10% tolerance. So if the value measured with an ohm meter is within plus or minus 10% of, of the stated value, it's okay to leave it in. These resistors are made of a carbon composition, which tend to go up in value with age just due to the nature of the material used. For example, here's one that was supposed to be a 33 ohm resistor. Well, check this out. When I measured it, come on, meter. I got 61.7 ohms, or almost double the stated value. I got similar readings for these other values, uh, resistors, so that's why I replaced all of them. And uh, I've already talked about how capacitors go bad with age, I'm sure. So, there we go. All neatly dressed. Oh, and I would mentioned about using heat shrink tubing insulation on this area here. Well, you can see I put on some of that black heat shrink tubing on the component leads to uh, protect it from shorting out. And there's one other thing I want to talk about before moving on. And that's safety and the way they built these radios. Here's another radio from about the same era. Uh, you've probably all seen this before. The UL label, short for Underwriter Laboratories. These are the guys that test appliances uh, for safety. Uh, to make sure there's no shock potential, that uh, they can stand up to uh, normal use, nothing will break, nothing will fall off, nothing will hurt you. Well, this radio doesn't have that label. And it's not because it was built so long ago that UL didn't exist. It did exist. And uh, in fact, when I look through these, the paperwork for this radio, there is mention that there was actually a version. This is a 5R11. There was a 5R11-UL, which did have um, some extra safety features. That's this uh, dashed in stuff here, which I don't have on this radio. If you notice here, there's two different symbols. One is some horizontal dashed lines, and this has some um, angled uh, lines here. Well, those are two different symbols for ground. Uh, like they say here, common ground and chassis ground. Now, if you wanted a UL listing, like uh, this Philco radio has, which is a similar type, similar to an All-American 5 series wired set, you would keep the metal chassis and the ground, which is going directly to the AC plug, separated. In this case, they didn't. I'll show you that here. So here's the old AC plug, unpolarized, meaning you can plug this in either way, so you have no idea which of these two lines is hot and which is neutral. Come into the radio, one goes directly to the rectifier tube, which is this top path here. The other side goes to the power switch. And the other end of the switch goes to this point, which is directly to the ground. Meaning when you throw this switch and turn the radio on, this entire metal piece here is connected to one end of this plug. Depending on how you plug this in, it could be neutral, it could be the hot or the black lead. And that's why this doesn't get a UL rating very dangerous thing to do. When you test this out, when you get it up on the workbench, do not just plug this in and then grab a meter and start touching and poking or hooking up a scope to this or anything, because you could very well hurt yourself, you could very well damage your equipment. What you need to use is an isolation transformer, like this RCA ISOTAP. And even then you got to be careful like with one like this, because up the top it says direct and isolated, only the left hand side are isolated, the right hand isn't. What I mean by isolated, there's a big one to one transformer in here. Uh, you plug into the wall and you get about 100, 120 volts in, 120 volts out, but this big transformer in here uh, acts as, well, an, it's isolating the AC line from the radio. 
which in effect makes it act like this radio from the 30s when they commonly did use transformers which would isolate the IC, the AC line from the chassis. Why did they dispense with using transformers in these radios? Well, this is pre-war and this is post-war. Post-war there was a boom. People, there was a lot of pent-up demand for new appliances. They had to crank these out. They, they wanted to lower the cost. So this is mass production here. <laughs> they wanted to get the cost down, lower the weight, and so on. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, electrically, it's sound. They do work. You just have to be a little careful uh, with that. Um, oh, and if you have a Variac, a Variac normally is not an isolation transformer. And then in particular, this one is not. So this will not protect you. You really need one of these guys. Uh, okay, um, I guess the next thing to do then is I'll pop the tubes back in, hook this up to my isolation transformer, and I'm actually going to hook it up to my Variac in series, and uh, when I resume the video I'll show you why.